Shavu Atov. We're now speaking about how the orb of Mamalakal Almin, the light that comes into all the worlds, affects this world. And essentially, we're speaking about how Hashem is present, Mamish. Hashem is absolutely present with us in this world. Hashem never left, especially all the way down in this world. And we're going to see the Siyat Deshmai, the transition from Soiv Kol Almin, the light that surrounds the world, as we said, the aboveness, the beyondness of Hashem, which we're comparing to the thoughts of Hashem. And even though, that, yes, thought is beyond the object that it's thinking of, but it's connected, it's thinking about that object. But the fact that it's thinking about that object does not limit the thought. It's bigger than that thought. It's beyond. And then we're going to share how after Hashem, and after is a bored expression, as Hashem thinks, then as the light is coming into finite existence, that's going to be the process of Hashem speaking. These are all spiritual concepts, and this is all code, as we've been discussing. But as we're going to learn shortly, there needs to be a transition between soiv kol almin, the beyondness of the world, Hashem's light that goes into the beyond, and the light that crystallizes into this world. There's going to need to be a, an interface at that point. We're going to learn that the interface is going to be the Asara Ma'amoros. It's going to be the Hebrew letters, and we'll, we'll learn in detail what that is. Now, though, we're speaking about as that light is crystallizing into this world, how it's giving life force to all elements of creation. Let's see. And as many of the great scientists of the day are finding out, especially in the realm of quantum scientists, they're seeing that so much of when they dig into the fabric of this world, more and more they're seeing that it's made of information, consciousness. The world is built of consciousness and information. So we say we've been saying that for thousands of years. Yeah, it's built of consciousness, of God consciousness, arranged in certain ways to create different levels of creation. So let's see that in detail now. Umamalakol almin and pei dalid, the beginning of the line. Mamalakol almin that Hashem is mamalakol almin and Hashem fills the world. He bechinas achis. This is the life force. Hamislam beshes toich etzeman nivra. This is the life force that comes inside of all creation. Shehim etzum tzemis besoicha. That that light, that or. And remember, when we say light, we're not referring to something physical here. We're referring to energy, a conscious existence, a power. And that power, which is so great, how could that power coincide with giving life force to a stender, to a phone? How could that be? There needs to be a downgrading process. And we've been using this analogy over and over, and it's a very, very good analogy that Sadiqam used this analogy, is that if the life force in its full power, let's say, this is lahavdil, manish, elf al dollars, will be like a nuclear power plant. So the nuclear power plant is very, very powerful. You don't charge your phone and plug it into the nuclear power plant. There wouldn't be much of a phone. But what you do is you allow the nuclear power to be, to be, downgraded and to be put through transformers to take the energy to the point that you could plug your phone into the wall and your phone will charge nicely without exploding. It's much better to have a phone that doesn't explode. So whatever a nuclear power plant is, God is a gazillion times more powerful. And that's not even, you know, you can't even say a number more powerful. So how is God taking that light and bringing it into this world? He's doing something called tzimtzum. He's giving the light, the thing, just like the energy that's coming out of the wall is coming from the plant. But it's in a fashion that can be absorbed by the 
creation by the thing that you're plugging in. So to Hashem is doing the same thing when it comes to creation. So the light is here, but it's been taken through a very complex series of downgrades, which we mentioned earlier in the Sefer, which has to do with the moving around of letters, has to do with the switching of letters and the Rala, Sha'arim, it has to do with Gematrias. The idea being, as we'll get to shortly, is that creation can't handle the light even though higher levels of creation can handle, handle higher levels of the light, once you get down to like real coarse creation, like a quarter pounder, like just like coarse, thick, what's, coarse, what's the coarsest? Just... Candle wax. Yeah, yeah, candle wax. <laughs> just, 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 whoa, that's thick. So just coarse creation, just physicalness, so that light needs to be downgraded a lot in order to come into different types of creation, let's say a rock. Now, that, that doesn't mean that every rock is created equal. There's gemstones. Gemstones, you could tell, have something a little bit different going on in them. We speak about gemstones in the Torah. The breastplate of the Kohen Godla was filled with them. Gemstones have a koyach. Okay? that Hashem put into it. But what we're explaining now is why the gemstones look like gemstones and a piece of uh, quartz looks like a piece of quartz and a piece of limestone is limestone and granite is granite. Why do they look different? The answer is different configurations of how Hashem is allowing that light to be confined and restricted. This is just scratching the surface of this whole world called... Kabbalah, which we're just simple Eden, just trying to learn a little bit of Tanya. And really, the reason we're learning this is to build Emuna. The entire Sefer is called Shar Hayichud Ve'emuna. This is the gate of going into understanding God's unity, that the whole world is filled with God. And Emuna, that I'm able to weather the storms of life because I know that Hashem, you're with me in this world. Okay? B'tzimtzum rav, as Hashem is bringing this light into the world with great restriction, kefi erech mahusa nivra, according to the nature of every single part of creation, that Hashem will want Nike shoes, I don't know if he's into sweat labor, but let's say, whatever, a shoe, or uh, all parts of creation. Is it sweat labor? I don't know, it's a machlekes, right? Or no, it is. <laughs> There's no way they're So, every single thing has a different element and a different configuration of how Hashem is going to bring that light into the world. Shubal gavul v'tachlis. And things in the finite world are defined by the following. Bal gavul v'tachlis. The world has definition. Finite creation is defined by the, that very fact that it has so much definition. Its size, its height, its, its weight, its color. It's this and not that. It's this height and not something shorter. It has this dimension, it's this shape and not another shape. That, that is the that absolute defining features of finite existence is that it has gavul and it has purpose. In two ways, bekamusai, in its amount, veechusai, in its quality. So it gives a simple example. The hainum, malosai vechashifusai, how important something is in its size, in its function. Kagain, here's an example. Hashemish, the sun. The sun has a size, and the sun has a quality of how well it functions. Shagufa yesh gavul v'tachlis. The body of the sun has a, has a limit and a tachlis v'kamoisoi in its amount. Says the Balatan, he's really quoting from a Rambam. Shu kamoi, it's about a hundred kuf samach zayin pa'omen. 
It's about 167 times kegoidl kadur ha'aretz. The sun is about 167 times the size of the earth. You go do a calculation. How much bigger? A lot bigger. So here we'll have to understand, we'll have to go and understand what the Rambam meant by this. The <coughs> Echusoi. So we'll have to see, we have to understand what the Rambam meant. Or according to the science that he had at that time, we'll have to understand. What the Rambam meant. The Echusoi and the value, the, the value of the thing, meaning the quality of the thing, the Malosoi, who Oiroi Gamken Yeshloi Gavul. The light of the sun cannot shine forever. Why can't it shine forever? Because the sun will go out. Because it's created. A created thing will only have a finite amount. Of, of battery life. Just like your Tesla at a certain point needs a charge. It will not go forever. The sun cannot go forever. Even it has a very long lifespan, but it can't go forever. Anything finite will run out, will expire. Just like a body. A body is a finite creation. The body at a certain point disintegrates. That was totally wrong. Yeah, it's 109. Yeah, it's actually not too far off. Okay, it's so actually, he, he went over. I was thinking he was going to go way under. Yeah, same. So, so here, first of all, that's very fast. And, first, and the Rambam says it's about 160 times, 167. That's a pretty good, meaning if you were in the ancient world and you looked at this little dot in the sky, <laughs> you know, it kind of looks like the size of the moon. And how do you know how big your earth is? How do you know how big your earth is? <laughs> That's pretty good calculations from the Rambam. I'm you said 160 what? It's 109. Uh, Not bad. Okay. So you see that there's a, an awareness there. And he said Kamo. Not 100%. He said, but we're, we're in the ballpark. And I, I would say that's very, very impressive. And... The main function that he's telling you here is not how impressive the rabbis are at their, at their geometry and mathematics, and that they were, that's pretty good for the ancient world to know that information. That's, that's not the function here. The function here is, it has a size. It's a finite orb with a size. That's the main point here. It's a finite orb with a size. Okay, and they were pretty close to the estimation of what that size was. A thou more than a thousand years ago. It's, pretty, it's a pretty uh, amazing uh, assessment. But that's not our topic here. Our topic is it has a size and it also has an echus, which means it will run out. Even though the value is that we're, the sun is shining nonstop to us, but the sun cannot keep shining forever because it's a created being. Anything which is a created being will s at some point stop. It can't continue forever. And even if you say that it continues forever, it can't be forever because it's defined. It's not infinite. There's a finite limitation to it. So it can't be infinite to be a contradiction. Okay. So that's, that's the Balatanya's example of anything in this world that's finite existence. It has a specific echus, qualities and comma size and amount that when Hashem is creating the sun something from nothing all the time there's a specific configuration that it's giving to it okay that's what we're entering into now the sun cannot shine forever it's a created thing so to every single thing in creation has been created and has finite limitation around it. The Gemara in Chagiga explains that there's different lengths to go through different levels of the stratosphere. 
To go through space takes certain amounts of time, implying that it's also physical. Even if the amount of space to get across the galaxy takes X amount of time, well, it's a finite amount of time. If you had the instrumentation to get you there, then you could. It would take time. Which means it's measurable. Everything here the Balatanya is telling you is this world is a measurable world. And even if you want to tell me that you're going, you know, is Spock, and you got into the thing, and they like warp, right? They get into like the warp zone, and they just like fly through. Star Trek thing. It's like Mamish from a thousand years ago. He did the Kayan thing, right? He's like, so, so, what should the Kayan are all about then? That Yevarech Hashem Yishmael is prosper. So it's the brach for Parnasa. It's Mamish. Look at Rashi there. The, there's still a time, there's still some time that you're moving through time. So in the world of finite creation, there's going to be in the configuration of... This is, I know it's technical, but this is just a lot of learning. The sequence of creation is a bit mathematical. So one of the parts of it is that Hashem is giving different delineation and configurement to different parts of finite creation. The one that he mentioned here is the sun. But it means for everything. And therefore, since you have finite creation, the life force that Hashem is going to be invigorating every part of creation with, in order to allow a finite creation to still retain its finiteness, will have to be a tremendous concealment of that light. Rav Otsum. It needs to go through tremendous concealment, just like to go from the nuclear power plant to your phone, plugged into the wall, until literally from God's infinite ore, which is not even Hashem, it's just the phase of the ore, which is absolutely powerful, which fills all the universes, everything, that you could create a wax candle. You can create, let's go with something, you can create a chili dog. Isn't that a sign? No, a chili dog? Yeah. There's like something even though, uh, like there's like meat everywhere. Sloppy Joe. Sloppy Joe. That's what I was going for. A sloppy <laughs> Joe sandwich. It's just like, oh, I never liked those by the way. They were like, it's like not my vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like a little too olam haze for me. But it could be that's the opposite. You, you could reveal the light in a sloppy Joe. And that's a big avoida. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I, was, I just think it clogs the arteries. I don't think it's so great for you. Al Capone. The, the Indian, though, that every single thing in the creation is going to need like a very unique level of symptom is what we're going into. And it's going to have to be a very intense amount of symptom. Kamay shehem, balegvu v'tachlis. Oh, here we go. Next phase. Ki makorachi is the source of this life force. The source of the life force, as it's coming into this world, is called the Ruach Piv. It's called the spirit, the breath of Hashem's mouth. And here we're not talking about a physical mouth, obviously, as we mentioned many times. We're talking about conceptually, the idea that speech takes that which is hidden and reveals it to another. So when we speak about the spirit, the breath of Hashem, we're speaking about Hashem wanting to reveal Himself to a creation. So anytime that you see speech in the Torah, you need to change your brain from thinking that there's some big giant set of lips in the sky speaking, because that would be totally forbidden. That's a type of idol worship and, 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 and kfira, and making God, God forbidden to parts. But rather, it's all conceptual. It's the idea that just like our speech reveals, when we speak about Hashem's speech, Hashem is what's that which was only known to Hashem becoming shared with the creation. 
And through that, Shalak Kadosh Baruch Mislabesh, here we go. This is the next main part we're going to deal with. That light is then going to come through Ba'asara Ma'amorois Shabbat Torah. It's going to come through the ten utterances of God creating the world in the beginning of the Torah. So the ten utterances of creation, it's called Asara Ma'amorois, Nivra Olam. We mentioned this already in chapter one of Shah Yechav Amuna. The whole world was created through these ten utterances. So all the content of those ten utterances are the fabric of the world. So how did Hashem create things that it doesn't talk about in the ten utterances? So we said Hashem takes those letters and He moves them around. Either the Ralah Sha'aran moves them around for different letters or mixes them up like a bananagram or an anagram. Right? If I give you a mixed up word, let's say the word was like, you know, toe. So, I'm trying to tell you about a toe. My, my, my kids and I on Shabbos, they were really into this thing, it's called charuz in Hebrew, it's to, like rhymes. So they were, we were like making all these funny rhymes, and I was like, like bow, toe, ah, and my baby was like cracking up. And all the kids are like, yeah, they, and then you give kids this stuff, and they run with it. They couldn't stop, you know, head, bed, <laughs> okay, they went for it, they went for it. Okay, they kept my kids entertained for a while. So I'll call upon them, toe. So if I, if, so toe is, those aren't Hebrew letters, but let's say toe. So if I say O-E-T. So you're like, what is that? So toe has been obscured. It's been downgraded, There's, it's muddled. You get what I'm saying? So those letters could mean something else, okay? In the Hebrew language, in the English language, that particular word, I don't know of anything that's an O-E-T. But in Hebrew, if you take certain letters and you move them around, other words start forming. And even if they're words that you don't recognize, they could be names of angels, they could be all sorts of interesting things. That is the process of taking the ten utterances of speech, Hashem moving them around, which creates a concealment. When I give you a bananagram, like O-E-T, and I'm like, I'm like, what's this? Like, oh, it's a toe. So the fact that it was downgraded, it, it hid toe from you. It was hiding. You get what I'm saying? It, something was concealed from the original light of the concept. So when God takes the 10 utterances, and he moves the letters around, it's like making bananagrams in creation, which downgrades the clarity of the light and allows for more coarse level of creation to exist. Well, so you're saying everything is just a, an anagram for one word. The only things that are not bananagrams are the asara ma'amaris, but everything else that comes into creation is either coming in through bananagrams, <laughs> what we call chilufim, switching the letters around, tumurois, moving ar around other letters, or gematrias. Gematrias mean the, the original word is taken, the, the word is turned into a numerical value, gematria, which also, if I, just, if I had a few numbers on the table, if I just said, you know, 36, so I've obscured what I'm thinking about right now. I'm thinking about Leia. Thinking about the matriarch Leia. Leia. But if I just say 36, I've obscured her, which means the light called Leia, let's say, has been obscured. I put it into the number, and then I bring it back into Leia, or I can bring it back into Lo, like Lamed Vav, which means to him. I can move these concepts, and downgrade and obscure where it came from. That's the idea. When you plug your phone into the wall, you don't even think it's coming from a, some power plant somewhere. It's been obscured. But if you're a thinking person, you are always tracing back all the levels of creation to where they come from. That's the whole journey of Kabbalah. And really this comes up in davening, is that you're tracing yourself back to where you come from. 
fact, like davening is a journey of going through the spiritual worlds higher and higher and higher, back to source, like the ray of light journeying back to the face of the sun. Or in our analogy, like the phone charging, you going through the socket, journeying towards the nuclear power plant. Conceptually. Okay? So as Hashem is bringing this light into the world, He does it through the Asar Ma'amaras. It doesn't just go from the light that surrounds the world into being here. It goes through the Asar Ma'amaras, and if the Asar Ma'amaras, the light is too strong, it gets further degraded, further downgraded, 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 until it can show up in everything down here. And literally start fashioning tables and chairs and everything. Which, like we began with, the world is built out of information. The fabric of creation is information. And the Torah helps us to decode all the information. That's so, why I mean, look at Ichimaira Siddur and you just, you just see shame, like names of God. So he knows what he sees. He sees all of creation. I'm, I'm, I'm rem- there was a movie called The Matrix, right? It helped a lot of people appreciate this because they saw him. And there was that guy and he's like, there's the girl with the red dress. It's like, you don't see it, bro? It's like, I just see numbers. It's like, you're uninitiated. Like, you, you, you. So when you look at Ichimaru Siddha, it might just look like, I don't, I don't even know what's going on here. But when he sees it, he sees, he sees wealth. He sees happiness. He sees uh, helping children in Africa have food. He sees everything in there. He sees the fabric of creation in there. And, he's, and the details and how things are changing and it depends on the holiday, it's, it's a whole system. This is just like 101, just a bit of an introduction to all this. So as the light is coming into the creation, the fashion creation, it comes through the Asara Mahamaras, and like we explained that the Asara Mahamaras is further divided if creation needs more concealment of that light. Okay, last line. If Hashem's light was left untouched, un, meaning if Hashem never gave the Asar Ma'amaras to, so to speak, filter the light, Hashem would just, the light would just create universes and forever. This is the power of the Asar Ma'amaras, as Hashem said to his word, die. Die means should die. That it should stop. That Hashem limited it to this. The analogy of the Gemara in Chagiga says, like a ball of yarn that was like spinning out. My mother knits a lot. Like she, whenever she drops her ball of yarn like on the bus, she's like, whoo, like on a plane. Like, whoo. I always think of that Gemara. It's like the ball of yarn is spinning out of control. Shem says, die. Otherwise, there would just be endless creation. Shem actually said, I want it to come into specific, and if that was happening, finite creations as we know it would not exist. It would be overwhelmed. There would be this crazy level of awe in creation happening. Shem didn't do that. He stopped it. He put it into Asar Ma'amaras. That light came into this world. This world itself is very impressive. We'll get more into the details of this. We should be Zaycha Mamish. To Mashiach Tzid Kainu B'mehir V'yameinu Amen Amen Kol Tov Shavua Tov Shavua Tov